Today we're going to talk about how when Nicolas Cage starts putting out more movies, people start mysteriously dying in drowning accidents. So what's that about? We'll talk about how when two things are related statistically, they may not have any real relation at all. And we'll discuss how correlation does not equal causation. Hey, thanks for stopping by. My name is Anthony Davis, and this is Shapeshift Wellness, the channel that uses evidence-based methods and research to explore fitness and yoga and meditation and other ways that we can take our health into our own hands. Today, it's important to understand a little bit about statistics and data because this is where we're getting our big headlines about this thing is safe, this thing causes cancer, this thing's gonna kill you, ah! So by understanding a little bit of the fundamentals, you can be better prepared to evaluate claims and if they are maybe true or false. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you get notified when I release future videos. And stick around to the end of the video because especially for yoga people, we tend to be into more alternative sort of health options out there. And a lot of the diets and fads and uh, you know essential oils and all these kinds of things are riddled with false claims and pseudoscience. And I want you to be properly prepared. I'll give you a word of warning for again, how to evaluate those things so you can make smarter choices for your own health. So let's get back to Nicholas Cage killing people in pools. Ah. So here are the statistics. When we compare on a graph over uh, about a decade of time, the number of people who are drowning by falling into a pool, and we compare the, the rates of, of people drowning in pools to the um, amount of films that Nicolas Cage is appearing in, well, we start to see that there is a really suspicious correlation that when Nicolas Cage's films start to go down, we see that the number of people drowning in pools also goes down. And then suspiciously, when they both go up, they both go up. So when Nicolas Cage is putting out more films, more people are drowning in pools. So I can create the headline, Nicolas Cage is causing people to drown in pools because there's a clear correlation right here. But the problem is that just because two things look to be related on a graph does not mean they have any relationship at all. So unfortunately, full disclosure, Nicolas Cage has nothing to do with people drowning in pools. Uh, he is not killing people. He is not pushing people into pools as our hilarious graphic suggests. Insert hilarious graphic here. So we need to be extremely careful when we see a graph and we see two things that appear to be related. They may not be related at all. Let's check out some more examples so you get the idea. So here's another one. Uh, by the way, these are real core uh, statistics. These are, are real data that we're looking at here. So this one is comparing the per capita consumption of mozzarella cheese to civil engineering doctorates awarded. Now I could make the headline that eating more cheese will get you a higher degree or people who eat more cheese earn more in life. <laughs> because clearly on the graph, we see that people who eat, uh, <laughs> Clearly on the graph, uh, we see that there's a correlation between eating more cheese and between uh, people being awarded really high level civil engineering degrees. But again, does that mean that they are related, that one of these things is causing the other to happen? Is it true that if you just eat more cheese, then you are going to get a terminal degree in uh, civil engineering, that you're going to get your doctorate in civil engineering? No, they, they have absolutely nothing to, to do with each other. Uh, I have some better examples coming up. Here's another hilarious one. Again, these are real statistics, by the way. Um, thanks to Tyler Vegan, Vigan, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, but thank you for putting these statistics together. These are amazing. So this one is saying, uh, if you eat more cheese, you're more likely to get tangled and die in your bed sheets at home. So the news media might put out a headline that says, eating cheese will kill you in your sleep. And they're getting that from a real statistic. They're using real data. They see a graph, they show you the graph, and it looks very convincing. However, just because two things appear the same on a graph does not mean that one causes the other. Okay, one more from this site. This one's common. Um, divorce rate in Maine and per capita consumption of margarine. So we see that um, as people eat less margarine, they uh, we also see that there's a correlation between people getting fewer divorces. Fewer people are getting divorced. So does that mean that uh, if, you know, uh, couples who eat less margarine 
stay together longer. No, obviously not. They they have nothing to do with each other. And this one is going to show us a, a good example of how we can extrapolate that a third variable might be causing both uh, A and B. So we see ice cream, sandal, um, ice cream sales and sunglasses sold. We see a clear um, trajectory here that the more it looks like the more ice cream is sold, the more people are buying sunglasses. So does I, does buying ice cream cause people to buy sunglasses as well? No, most likely what's happening is there is a third thing that is causing both of these things to increase at the same time. So in this case, it's not that buying, um, you know, or selling more ice cream causes people to buy sunglasses, or it's not that people who wear sunglasses are more likely to buy ice cream. What's really going on here is that what happens in the summer? It's sunny in the summer and you want to eat more ice cream because it's cold and refreshing and it's sunny. So you wear more sunglasses. So because it's summertime, you're more likely to buy sunglasses for the sun and at the same time, you're more likely to get ice cream. So it's not that ice cream or sunglasses causes each other to rise. It's the third thing that causes both to rise. The important takeaway here is with all of these, there is a correlation. A correlation is just a relationship on a graph. We see that these two things appear to have a correlation, a relationship. Here we see a correlation, the graph, the lines on the graph. They go up and down at the same time. But just because they look the same on the graph doesn't mean they have anything at all to do with one another. So how do we determine if there is a cause and effect relationship? First of all, a cause and effect relationship simply means that one thing causes the other thing to happen. So it's not enough to say that two things happen at the same time. We have to imply that one thing is actually causing the other thing to happen. So we need three things to happen in order to make that claim. First, we need to, that the cause has to happen before the effect. So it ha the cause has to precede the effect in time. Secondly, we need the things to have a correlation. So they do, they do have to be correlated. So it's, it's true that in order for a cause and effect relationship to happen, there has to be a correlation. However, that does not mean that everything that has a correlation also has a cause and effect relationship. Okay. So this goes back to our mantra of correlation does not equal causation. And then the last criteria is that there, there cannot be any other explanation. You cannot find a third thing that could possibly be influencing both of the original items that you were looking at. Hey, be sure to stick around just a little bit longer because I'm going to talk about how this relates to yoga and making smart and healthy choices for yourself. So today we learned that just because two things correlate does not mean that one thing caused the other thing. We also learned that graphs can be extremely misleading. Obviously, Nicolas Cage movies do not cause people to fall into pools and drown more often. They are completely unrelated. And we learned that in order to determine cause and effect, you need the cause to come before the effect. You need there to be a correlation and there must not be any other possible explanation. So quick tip for yoga people and people who are into various alternative and complementary health practices. Here are some examples that might be more relevant to you in your life and how you can spot things that appear to be related, but really are not related at all. One example might be that maybe you find in the research that people who do yoga tend to live longer. Well, if that's the case, you might form the conclusion that doing yoga makes you live longer. Well, maybe, maybe that's true, but an alternative cause could be that, well, people who are more concerned about their health, people who are already health conscious, who are eating healthy, exercising, doing yoga, doing mindful activities, spending you know quality time with their loved ones, um, spending more money and investing in their own health, those types of people are more likely to do yoga. So it may not be that the yoga itself is causing these people to live longer, but rather it may be that a person who is already thinking about their health in general and, and therefore is more likely to live longer, they just 
happen to do yoga. Another really common example is that people tend to try a lot of really gimmicky ways of healing themselves of various ailments, pains, injuries, diseases, etc. And they'll try anything under the sun. Things like, um, let's say, essential oils is for some reason very popular. I'll make a video on essential oil uh, oils. I'm not a big fan unless you just want your room to smell nice. But let's say that somebody tells you, some Becky, sorry, Becky, all the Beckys in the world right now, all the Beckys and Karens in the world. <laughs> Ah, uh, you just, sorry, you just, uh, d d you got the short straw <laughs> on the names. So they tell you that, you know, using this kind of essential oil is going to cure your, I don't know, skin condition or of some kind. Well, the trouble is that a lot of common, you know, ailments, a lot of aches and pains and a lot of conditions for your skin and other conditions that people suffer on a regular basis are self-limiting. So they resolve on their own whether you treat them or you do not treat them. So whether you go to a doctor and you get treatment or you do nothing about them, a lot of common complaints just fix themselves. So you might go and use some essential oils and you think that they're going to fix your your thing, your skin condition, let's say, then eventually your skin condition resolves. It, you know, it goes away and you're thinking, well, I used the essential oils, I had a skin condition, and then it went away. Therefore, the uh, essential oils cured my skin condition. Well, you check two of the three boxes of the criteria to determine cause and effect. You checked the box of does the cause come before the effect in time? And you check the second box, which is, is there a correlation? But you did not check the third box, which is that no other explanation is possible because there is another explanation that's possible and extremely likely, which is that the condition that you had was self-limiting and that it simply fixed itself. And it would have gone away whether you used essential oils or not. So in short, be vigilant, think about alternative hypotheses to all your alternative health you know choices and uh, use your critical thinking skills and realize that just because two things appear to be related does not mean that they are thank you be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel i'll see you in the next episode